What's up guys, welcome to another PC building video here on the RA Visuals channel. So if you guys are new to my channel, thank you for checking the video out. Uh, we do PC builds and all sorts of techie stuff here on the channel, so uh, thank you for stopping by. But anyway, the goal of today's video is we are going to take this Lenovo M93P, which is just a general, you know, office pre-built computer that I found. I think I got this thing like a year ago. Um, and I actually already did a video on this and I upgraded it to be a gaming computer. So if you guys have not seen that, it'll be linked up here so you guys can take a look at, look at that video. And so what I did is basically uh, I took the stock computer, which already had a one terabyte hard drive, and then it had an Intel i5 4590 or 4570 in there. Anyway, it's one of the 457090i5s. Uh, um, and then I upgraded the RAM to 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz. And then I also stuck in an uh, NVIDIA GTX 1060 3 gig into this thing, and it made an actually really good gaming computer. And I was able to use the stock power supply, everything like that, because uh, this graphics card does not use that much power. Uh, but the goal of today was something that I mentioned to you guys a long time ago that I wanted to do, and that is to go ahead and case swap this baby. So we're gonna take it from this boring old, you know, uh, pre-built chassis right here. We're gonna put it in this really cool, like racing car looking chassis right here with some RGB lighting, because you know, everybody wants that. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to do a few different conversions, hopefully, uh, to see what kind of problems you may run into, like error messages upon boot and stuff like that. So specifically, I'm gonna show you guys how to put a new power supply in this thing using one of these adapters right here, which is what you're gonna need. And then we're gonna also show you how to retain the uh, USB 3s on this motherboard, which is one of the common problems with the M93Ps, uh, using an adapter right here, which I got to. Uh, so hopefully this should go very smoothly. It should almost be just kind of like a plug and play type situation, but we're gonna find out if it really is right after a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of that annoying Windows activation watermark on your desktop? VIP URCD Key has you covered with fully licensed codes to activate your favorite games and software. Purchasing your key is super easy. All you have to do is click on the item that you want, click buy to add it to your cart. Once in your cart, you can now enter my promo code RAV20. After adding the promo code, you'll see your savings pop up and you can then purchase your product with your chosen payment method. Finding and entering your Windows 10 CD key is super easy. All you have to do is go over to your user profile, Find your purchase and click View Keys and Codes to reveal your new CD key. Then all you have to do is go to Settings and Windows, click on Update and Security, click on Activation, and finally click on Change Product Key and paste your new key into the window and click Next. You'll now have a fully licensed version of Windows 10 with no watermark. Check the links in the description to start saving now. Okay, so before we start tearing things apart, I wanna go ahead and clear up right away a few of the things you're gonna need to go ahead and make this swap possible just right away um, before you even get started here. So one of the things that you guys may wanna do is go ahead and upgrade the power supply. That's a common thing because you may wanna use a higher wattage um, graphics card that requires more power. So what you're gonna go ahead and need is you're gonna need one of these adapters right here. So these are very cheap. These You can get these on eBay or Amazon and I'll have a link down below for you guys so you guys can use my affiliate link, uh, help out the channel a little bit and then uh, get you guys uh, a nice little cable right here. So what it basically does is it converts the uh, normal uh, 24 pin on a uh, power supply to the proprietary pin, which I think on this motherboard is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is that seven? I think it's that yeah, there's seven on, on each thing. So it's a 14 pin right here. So it's a 24 to 14 pin. So uh, yeah, so it'll basically make this work with the M93's, uh, M93P's uh, motherboard down here. So you're gonna need this adapter right here. Something else that you're gonna need right off the bat, another adapter that you'll need. If you wanna retain the USB 3's when you switch over to another case right here, because this case, I believe it does have two USB 3's on the front right here, and the M93P also has that, another reason why I kind of use this case for this, but um, if you want to retain those USB 3's from this case, uh, you're going to need a little adapter for it, and the thing that you need to get is this little adapter right here, let me take it out of the thing right here, it basically just goes in place of the um, proprietary uh, USB 3 hub or the front panel connector, and it allows you to go ahead and just convert that into a USB 3 uh, plug. I'll, I'll, show, I'll show a closer uh, B-roll shot of it so you guys can actually get a good look at it. 
but it's a really cool little piece of kit you can pick up from a website called Harbin Repairs. Uh, you can buy this stuff on eBay too, that's where I originally found it, but they make all sorts of cool adapters for uh, Dell Optiplexes and a couple things for the M93P as well. So uh, shout out to those guys, they didn't send that to me or anything like that, not sponsored, I just found it and uh, it happened to work for our purposes. So those two things are two, two adapters you're gonna need right off the bat should you wanna do those upgrades when you're case swapping this particular computer. So all we gotta do first right here is go ahead and start tearing this thing apart and pulling all the parts out. So I'm basically gonna take almost everything. I'm gonna take all the stuff that I need uh, with the exclusion of the power supply and the DVD drive, of course. Uh, we're gonna take it all out and then we're gonna see uh, how, it, how we do putting it into the new chassis uh, piece by piece and see what we gotta do to um, you know, make it all work. All right, now some of you might be wondering, why did I choose specifically this case that I chose right here? Well, mainly, it was cheap. I think it was like only 50 bucks. I can't remember if I got it on Amazon or Newegg, one of those two, but uh, it was 50 bucks or sub 50 bucks. Uh, it comes with three, I believe, uh, no, four actually, three in the front and one in the back, four pre-installed RGB fans. Uh, it has room for a standard size, I think it's standard size ATX and uh, MNTX motherboards and it has enough room to support the build that we're doing it's actually like a little bit smaller than a standard mid-size here let me go ahead and show that to the side it's like it's a little bit skinnier i think or i guess not as long as a normal mid tower would be and the normal mid tower comes out a little bit more um so it's a little bit more compact it has a tempered glass side panel and everything like that so i think it's a screaming deal you guys and also one of the main other reasons was i that i got this thing was the fans, they all don't need fan headers, actually. Uh, this thing comes with its own fan hub as well. So these fans are powered, I believe, by SATA power, most likely, or Molex power. Uh, so we can run that right from that uh, different power supply we're gonna put in this. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing opened up so we can go ahead and start putting the motherboard in here, if it hopefully works. We'll find out here. Uh, one thing I was very curious about is if this uh, motherboard right here is some kind of, is a standard layout. It looks like a normal, like standard uh, micro ATX layout. So hopefully it is. All right, so first thing here, I wanna see really quick, I wanna test this to see if this motherboard fits and if the layout will even work. If, uh, or if this is some weird layout and we gotta kinda jerry rig it. But I think by looking at it, this looks like a standard micro ATX layout, you guys. So yeah, I think I'll be able to use the actual, the headers on, or the, the standoffs that are already in here. I'll add a couple, and I, you guys, that this thing fits in here perfectly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take these guys right here. And I'm just gonna take these little tabs, and I'm gonna just bend them real quick. So this is one of those, this is one of those little jerry rigging things you sometimes gotta do with these pre-builds. But hey, if that's all I gotta end up doing today is bending a few tabs so I can make a, an IO shield work, I don't care. Let's go ahead and throw this in here like that, and will it snap in now? I think, oh, I think I got it. So it goes in. So I'm just gonna, honestly guys, I'm gonna leave it like that because when our motherboard goes in, it'll actually push it and it won't it won't go anywhere. It's gonna be fine. Uh, I could just bend these tabs down. Honestly, I'd probably have to hammer them with this, like that, which I don't, like, it's not worth doing, you guys. It's, it's, it's in there. So there we go. That's pretty cool. We actually were able to retain the freaking IO shield with a pre-built. That's, that's pretty awesome, I love it. Let's move on to the next part. All right, standoffs are in, so let's go ahead and test this. So honestly, the motherboard assembly, since the IO shield and everything's in, it should just go right where it should. And yep, everything lines up perfectly, guys. Oh my gosh. That was super easy. No jerry-rigging, no nothing. No having to drill any holes or anything. I was expecting I was gonna have to like, you know, put some special standoffs in there with whatever. I have no idea, but that just plug and plays right there. That's amazing. So uh, yeah, I always shield in and everything. Man, that's awesome. Okay, so yeah, just gotta screw these down and then we can uh, move on to the next part. I guess I gotta throw the power supply in and uh, yeah, get everything wired up. That'll be fun. All right, so so far everything's been sunshine and rainbows. And I mean, who doesn't like sunshine and rainbows? I mean, come on. Uh, so yeah, I think we're, we're going at a good pace here. Uh, I think the power supply here, when we put this in, obviously, you guys you guys don't know how to put a power supply in a PC. I have a great video on that. I'll link that up here for you. We're over there somewhere for you guys to watch if you guys want to see that. Um, it's a popular video on the channel. 
Yeah, I mean, this looks like it's just gonna go in like any normal power supply, perfect. So one compromise that I've already noticed here, uh, I don't think I can fix this because I haven't found an adapter to it, or I don't have one in the studio right now anyway, even if there is one that exists. But uh, the audio, uh, the front panel audio for the M93P was a longer um, connector than most, you know, normal HD audio connectors like this one right here that I'm showing you uh, for most aftermarket cases. So uh, I don't believe we're gonna end up being able to use this. So the only compromise so far that I know of is we're not gonna be able to use the headphone and microphone port in the front, which honestly, most people, you're using USB microphones now anyway, and uh, for headphones, you can plug it into the back of the, the, the case and everything like that, or you can just use HDMI, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm just gonna pretty much take this, run it down the side here, and I'm gonna hide it because I'm not even gonna end up using it. So it's just gonna sit right in there. All right, so now we're gonna start wiring some stuff up, starting with that big, 24 pin connector uh, that is now um, adapted to our 14 pin. So let me go ahead and see what will be the best routing option. Is it right around there? Or let's see, maybe the top one. It might be best to come right here and just sit right there. Yeah. And look at that with our little adapter, goes in and snaps in perfectly. This motherboard just needs a, looks like a four pin connector, um, which this power supply has two of those. It has the ability to do an eight, an eight, but uh, we only need four, so that's what we're gonna do for this. Let me see. Yeah, we should be able to just put this guy right in there where it goes. Um, I'm trying to get my hand in a position where you guys can see this, so. You guys can see it, it goes right there. There you go. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in there and then I'll let you guys see it. Um, no issues whatsoever, just goes right in. There you go, like a glove. So the next thing I'm gonna try to tackle is the uh, front panel connectors. So like I said, the front panel audio, we already know that's not gonna work because this guy down here, it's a much different connector than what we have available for our case. But with the, uh, the power switch, reset switch, hard, hard drive LEDs, all that kind of stuff, uh, we are able to take advantage of that. And the way we're gonna do that is because I found uh, some kind soul on Tarm's hardware actually have a, uh, a diagram of the Lenovo um, pinout. There we go, and all of our front panel stuff is going to be right here on this. So this is what we're gonna need to be, be paying attention to. So, all right, first thing we need to look up, hard drive LED, plus is right there on the very side there. So we have, let's see, HDD LED right there. There it is, and then the plus is right there. So we're gonna plug that in. Like it says, we're gonna plug it in just like that on the very end. So there is that one. All right, next, like I said in the beginning, I, wanna, I wanted to retain the USB 3 ports that were on the front of the Lenovo uh, M93P. So like I said, on this case, it has two ports just like the M93 did. So we can still do this because this case has a USB 3 connector. And like I said, we are able to utilize this cool little connector right here that I got off Harabin Repairs. Um, again, link will be down below. And so what we gotta do is we gotta just make this match up with the slot right here um, that we took the connector out of. And we just gotta go ahead and slot it in. And it basically changes this into a USB 3 connection. That's all it does. And now with that slotted in, we're able to take our USB 3 cable and plug it in right there. And bam. Now we have USB 3 and it works. Hopefully, well, we'll see. All right, two of my pet peeves so far um, about this case. Breakaway PCIe covers, hate those stupid things. Not, never fun, I hate, I just, they just look bad. Also, these stupid PCIe like lock things. Like, I, I realized they were a thing probably because people were getting their stuff stolen at LAN parties or whatever, but like, dude, on a budget build like that, like who cares? Like, come on. I, it just so, it's just so annoying. Anyway, I digress. Let's go ahead and just uh, put this graphics card in. Can I, I can't even see where it's going right now. There we go, okay. Push her in and we're slotted, beautiful. So like I said, I'm just gonna lightly put in everything because I am expecting there's going to be some kind of issue. So let's go ahead and just supply power to our graphics card. And guys, this should be it. All right guys, so like I said, in a perfect world, I should be able to plug this thing in, turn it on, and we should be able to get into Windows no problem. But 
I'm expecting there to be some kind of error message that we have to fix. So let's find out if there really is. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power real quick. Let's flip it on. Oh, okay, the system just turned right on. What? That's it? Is that literally it? You gotta be kidding me. Do we have error messages? Or is it just gonna boot right to Windows? I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it through the, the monitor right now, I can't tell. If it boots right to Windows, then that's, that's it, we're done. What? Are you kidding me? That's literally it? That's all I had to do. Is it gonna go to my screen right now? No way! You guys, that is it! There's no error messages, no nothing. I didn't have to I didn't have to bring over any sensors or anything like that. It all it all just works. Crazy. Now that's that's pretty awesome. Now what I want to test real quick, uh, I want to get us in there. I want to see if the uh, the USBs work like they should. Um, and uh, if everything is, is, is doing what it should be doing. So one second. All right, so yeah, put in my password. We're right back into Windows. Fans are spinning, everything seems to be fine. Uh, we got RGB, everything looks good so far. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna, this is, I got a USB 3 hard drive. I wanna use the USBs in the case and see if they actually work. Yeah, the USB 3s actually work, that's awesome. So yeah guys, everything works so far uh, and actually the front panel diagram that I showed you guys, it does work, look at this. So if you guys can see the front panel lights, they're blinking, they work. So all the front panel stuff actually does work. So let me see if I can, if, if the, uh, the power button actually works, let me see if I can shut the computer off with it. It's working. No way. That's so awesome, everything, Guys, this was so easy. Well guys, here we are at the end of our little journey here. And uh, yeah, we have taken this boring old office PC thing and we have turned it into this glorious looking thing right here. Yeah, I added a little bit of lighting to the top to make it pop a little bit more on camera. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I, I really, really enjoyed doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed checking this out and, and seeing the process that, uh, that you gotta go through to do this. Hopefully it was easy for you. If you wanna do this yourself, um, shouldn't cost you guys that much money. Uh, like I said, when I got this originally, it was very cheap. I found it on my local market. I think I got the system itself for like 80, 90 bucks. And then I added, of course, the graphics, all that kind of stuff. I think the initial gaming build in this was probably like 190 bucks. So you add this case, which was like 50 onto that. So, I mean, come on guys, you're looking at like what? $240 and you got this. I mean, if you guys can still, you pro probably not because you can't find the graphics card for that much anymore. But if you happen to have one laying around like me, you can get lucky, I guess. Uh, it'll probably cost you a bit more, but hey, I, I mean, I mean, it's still still worth it, right? I, I think it is. Anyway, whatever. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. Go ahead and like the video if I helped you guys out or you guys enjoyed watching me do this. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more stuff like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.